a look. It is huge, actually. This time yesterday, you were sitting at 5 degrees, and now we've got temperatures that are above freezing, 33 degrees right now. And we do have that wintry mess out there, but I'm telling you, we've got a warm-up coming our way this week. So let's look at some of the numbers here into the northeast. We'll start where temperatures today are going to be 34 in Boston, 34 in Buffalo. <clears throat> the warm-up is coming. And get ready, Buffalo, you're going to see readings that you haven't seen, actually, in more than a month since early December. That's how warm it's going to get. It takes a day or two to sort of even out, but then you start to see temperatures up into the 40s. Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Detroit, you're going to be 42 degrees. Look at Buffalo. By Thursday, temperatures hitting 52 degrees. Yes, December 3rd, I believe, is the last time that we were this warm. Maybe it was the 4th. At any rate, it was early December, and we're going to see the same thing in D.C., Pittsburgh, everyone warming up, everything melting, everything getting sloppy. Look, it's winter time, and we know it'll get cold again, but enjoy these couple of days this week. Now, we go up here to the Midwest, where we will also see a warm up, but then we do cool down this week thanks to the next storm system, the cross country storm tracking our way. Chris. G and this is why it's so hard to forecast what's going to happen. Is it sleet or is it freezing rain or, or is it snow? Simply because when you get into these uh, wintry mix patterns, it's always about a one degree difference that makes that makes a difference. So let's bring up our atmosphere. I'm going to take a look at a couple different levels. We're going to look at New York City, actually, and put the Empire State Building in here because later today, New York, Philly, D.C., you guys all have the chance of this wintry mess in the forecast. We start with all snow. And as you look at our atmosphere, it is cold below freezing through all the layers from six thousand feet down to the surface so that of course is going to be snow now let's bring in a warm layer this how it got kind of quieter too so now we bring in this warmer layer around 2,000 feet and by the way the Empire State Building is up around 1,400 feet so you think about you know at the top of that it's warm enough to be rain there but at the surface it is below freezing and we've got freezing rain so that's how you get freezing rain. But let's see about the sleet. It's just, again, ever so subtle. We bring in a little more warm air a little farther up, like around 4,000 feet. Um, but then we have a deeper cold layer. So now we've got snow that starts at the top. Then it melts enough, but then it refreezes because we have enough cold air near the surface that it refreezes into sleet. Can you hear that? That's loud. Plus, it has a beat. You can see it bouncing on the ground there as well. All right, so the most common type of weather I think we're going to end up with today in terms of North Georgia and into what we're dealing with uh, in maybe East Tennessee or Eastern Kentucky is the freezing rain concern. Um, and certainly the fact that we have dry air to start is helping create some of that evaporational cooling, and that's contributing to this freezing rain that we're dealing with. All right, Chris, I'll send it back to you. Right. It is Monday morning here, and as you get up, we throw these weather maps on the floor for you. There is a lot going on, and you're going to run through all the different wintry types of precipitation out there on the map today from snow to sleet to freezing rain the worst kind all the way down to the deep south so we'll break that down we'll show you who's going to warm up and when temperatures hitting the 60s in colorado this week yes but this is all tracking east and we'll show you how much of a warm-up we will see plus in the west we've got our next cross-country storm system that starts to move in it brings rain which is good right we need the rain but this is going to be too much already evacuations have been posted for some areas near the burn areas in california so that is our next concern Big morning concern. everyone uh, good morning. It is Monday, January 8th, and we're finally hoping for some warmer weather, right? Yes, it's in the forecast, and it's coming. We're seeing the numbers rise. Today is also National Winter Skin Relief Day, a day to remind us how to keep our skin from withering in the harshest of winter. I think chapstick. Chapstick. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, by now, your skin's already raw from the past couple of days. I know, so right here. So we'll, we'll give you the warm-up. That's yeah. the best way to help, and that will be coming. <laughs> What's interesting is how far north we actually have that wintry mix going on. It's not just in the south. All the way up into Cleveland and Pittsburgh, you guys this morning have been dealing with a mix of sleet, freezing rain, and snow. And there's a lot of kids out of school today. Cleveland, your temperature is going to keep on going up. We're already 35 degrees. Most school districts are out today. 33 degrees for you in Pittsburgh. You've had some pockets of the wintry mix out there. Look, so many bridges in the Pittsburgh area. It's, uh, it's hundreds. I can't remember the exact number, but you might be dealing with some icy spots on them. Cincinnati, we finally creeped above freezing. and have been staying there at 34 degrees, and you've been mainly seeing rain, so I think you're fine. Nashville, by the way, you're above freezing. You're going to stay there. You're not looking back, so we're doing fine. Go down to New Orleans, where it's 62 degrees and thunderstorms are in the area. Too much rain could be a problem there. And in Atlanta, here's the headache of a forecast for today, where temperatures are 32 degrees. The dew point is down in the, uh, the teens or single digits, and that means dry air is not allowing that moisture to get all the way to the ground just yet. Jim Camber is here, and I want to talk about this hurricane season in here just kind of button it up of course you know we started uh the season here active in the pacific um and lane was a part of that here one of three category fives in the pacific 
This one moved into the Central Pacific, giving Hawaii their biggest tropical rainmaker ever. Florence, also a big rainmaker, but also notable um, for various reasons. The track was so good with Florence. Remember five days out when you went back and looked at the verification, only a two-mile error on the track forecast from Florence from the National Hurricane Center. Tremendous. And then Michael, of course, the strongest hurricane to hit the Florida Panhandle, 155-mile-per-hour winds. We still have major cleanup ongoing here from that system. So the numbers, as we track down some of the numbers, the hurricane hunters were out five 180 hours flown by NOAA's hurricane hunters. And that's not including, of course, you got the Air Force that were out there as well. We also had uh, 40,000 observations from these drones, unmanned drones flown by NOAA and the Navy that gave us more observations that went into the modeling to help great, give those great forecasts. We had a busy season, 15 named storms. That's above average, right? We had four at once. That was the first time since 2008 we had that. Florence was a part of that mix. Four active storms at the same time. And yes, in this busy season, we set lots of records, including some state rainfall records. That was from Hurricane Florence in North and South Carolina. The 34 inches of rain in Swansboro. We had more than 35 inches of rain in Elizabethtown. And it took a month for all of the rivers to completely recede after Hurricane Florence. Now, Jim, we can say good riddance to hurricane season. We know they can happen, you know, outside of the season. Right. But 